Have you ever wanted to make your own floating Death Star? This is how to do it. This is my floating football. And watch, it floats. Ooh, wow. So it's very magnetic. And when it's on, you just, now this takes a while. Ooh, ow, yeah, no. Hey, hey, look, ta -da. Yeah, don't disturb it, Kathy. Ta -da. Ta -da. Time to turn this into a Death Star. Now I'm going to replace this football with a 3D printed Death Star. But first I needed to get it apart. I cut it at the centre, ended up peeling all the vinyl off and eventually managed to prise it open. After even more flexing and bending and prying, I managed to get the magnets at the bottom, which are what makes it float. I separated them so I can put them in the new Death Star. Now this whole thing was about 30 quid, which is quite expensive just for a display base. And I want to be able to use it loads and loads and loads of times. So I found out what was in there, two magnets and a steel plate, and I've bought something similar so that I can use different magnets in different displays and have other things in there. I'm thinking floating island. It's coming. Time to 3D print a Death Star. So I got a design of Thingiverse based on the real thing and I cut it up into four pieces. Now on my old printer, it just wouldn't fit. But I have a brand new printer that Nova 3D sent me. It's a Whale 2. It has two massive advantages over my other printers. One is a lot bigger than my Elegoo Mars. So you, can, you don't have to slice this up into too many pieces. I could get it in in four pieces. Brilliant. The other absolutely amazing thing is it's a monochrome screen. Now, I didn't know too much about this. I haven't been keeping up on 3D printers, but my old screens are all RGB and they lose a lot of the light coming through because of the RGB in it. Because this is just black and white, all the light gets through. And so my layer times went from somewhere around six to eight seconds down to two seconds. That basically halves the print time. It, it seems like it should be less, but a lot of the time is in lifting and lowering the build plate. So you don't get all of that as a direct saving. But I was doing this in six hours and it, I, I dialed it up for some of my other printers and it would have been 12 hours on them. So absolutely brilliant because you can print twice as much stuff. Then all I had to do was put it to print. And I've got to say, it is such a quiet printer by comparison to some of my other larger printers. It's a dream. Once I had washed them in isopropyl alcohol, I cured them. Normally I'd take the supports off, but I don't really care about the inside because you can't see it when it's finished. And I wanted to make sure they didn't warp at all as they were setting. So I cured them all and we were good to go. A pair of nippers made quick work on those supports and then I sanded any edges that were slightly bumpy flat. I glued the pieces together into two halves and then puttied the gap. I'm not puttied the gap between the two halves because at that point in the Death Star there's a line going round so it acts as a natural divider and it doesn't show on the final piece. I sanded any areas that were a bit bumpy with 800 sandpaper or metal files on the bumpier bits. I guessed it didn't look that great still though. And a coat of primer is brilliant for showing you any issues when there's different colours in the prints like I've got here. I was able to go over all those areas and just tidy them up with a bit more sanding. I'm going to admit it took me a few attempts to get the paint job right on this. Sometimes what you try first just doesn't work. So I started off with a white primer and the last one was to show any errors and was pale grey. This one's white because it's going to be a very pale coloured Death Star. I followed that up with this colour called MS White by Mr Colour. It's basically a really, really, really pale grey. 
Next I tried panel lining. Yeah, that didn't really work. The problem was these panels are actually need to be a bit darker. So I gave up on that, waited for them to dry and just spray painted them. I chose this darker bluey gray to just add some difference in color. I have to admit though, I just sprayed it on. It wasn't very neat and I just, the masking would have been too hard. Look, it's a curved surface and it's all bumpy. So I decided just to neaten it up by hand afterwards. And this is just white ink with a slight dab of black in, easy to mix, fairly consistent coverage. Uh, I did a couple of coats on the top, but just one coat on the side. And I went over all of the flatter bits to make them more uniform and plain in color. Finally, I matched everything together a bit better by dry brushing the highlights on the blue section. I used copious amounts of hot glue to secure the magnets to the bottom and then I glued the top in place. And before the final reveal, just a quick thank you to Jetto Hobby who gave me an amazing Pokeball. It's a beautiful design, it opens, it's hinged. I went through the whole process, I thinned it out quite a bit, I printed it, I spray painted it, I had tested it along the way, but when I came to the final bit at the end, it just won't stay on the magnets. The button at the front is just heavy enough that it pulls it off balance. Now I could go through and thin it all again. It's all at two millimeter walls, but realistically, I'm probably not going to, but please go and check out Jetto's beautiful Pokeball. I'll put links in the description. His is really small and opened and you can put Pokemon in. It's really beautiful. But anyway, back to the main event, the Death Star. And the learning point here is you do need a full globe sphere that's very light for this to work. If you try and make it too heavy in any way, it just won't work. Thanks for watching and remember subscribe hit the bell button and thank you to my patrons and youtube channel members they get extras but they also support me and that means the world to me a small death star sized world see you next time